Welcome to this tutorial in which we will be talking about curves. Um, let's just jump into it and look at what we will be creating today. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So this is what we will be creating today. We have this character here with a little box over here, which is an overlap volume. Overlapping it will allow us to influence this point light. It's, you can see there's a light on the floor there. There's a light inside of that box. And overlapping the box will influence it in different ways. We have a curve for a float, which will increase its intensity. So walking in here, we can see the intensity goes from zero to bright and then simmers out again. And we can also change this to go to our color curve which we have set up so that it will go from dark to yellow to dark. So that's what happens when we overlap it now. And we can also make use of our curve that allows it to use a curve to change its position. So walking into it, we can see that it goes up and down. Might be not clear, let's do it like full screen. You can see up and down. Also, if we stand under, stand under here, you can see that we're continuously overlapping it, so it's going up and down all the time. So that is what we will be setting up uh, with this curve system today. And if we are happy about it, we can smash a door also. Yeah. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.26. And let's just talk a little bit about what a curve is to begin with. So here I have an actor with a curve on it. So a curve represents, well, a curve. It uh, allows you to have a certain value happen at a certain point in time. Normally it has two axes. So normally this bottom axis represents time, which is the X axis. Normally the Y axis represents a value of something. And in this case, if you were to go and check at the time 0 0.5 here, for example, you'd get a value of 0 0.2 or something like that. And this can be used for a lot of different things. And let's just demonstrate how that can be done uh, now. So to start off with curves, you can find by right clicking and going to miscellaneous, then clicking curve. You have three different curves available to you. A curve for float, which will handle a float value that can range in different ways. A curve vector, which will handle three different values. So X, Y, and Z, for example. So to represent a location or any other parameter that has three values in it, uh, three floats then more specifically. And then you have a curve linear color, which is essentially the same as a curve vector with addition of a fourth value for alpha or opacity. So let's start creating these to begin with. So we'll call this one first a float curve and we'll save it and we create another one. We make it a vector and we call it a vector curve. And let's create the last one, which is the curve linear color. And we'll call it the color curve like so. And we'll save that. So let's demonstrate how you can make use of these curves. So let's start with the float curve, which is the simplest one. This is what you're presented with. It looks similar to the other curve sheet that I had over here. And, and also this specific curve is for a timeline up here. So this curve over here, uh, what we have is a baseline down here. And so we have values along the X axis, which are the time, which is the time, and the Y axis, which is the value essentially. And to create a curve in here, we need to add keys. So right clicking on the curve allows you to add a key. You can do this multiple times to have multiple keys, like so. So we could say, for example, we want at time zero, we want it to be value zero. We want it at time 0 0.5 to be a value of 0 0.6. And we want it to at time one be a value of zero again. So now we've created the very simple curve. We have a bunch of functionality available to us in here. So among the things that we have is, uh, the more important things are we can, 
look at our different views here. They're not that mo much used, I think. You can zoom to fit, which will align all the different keys that you have so that you can see all of them at the same time on the screen. You have the ability to uh, see tangents. To make this apparent, what we can do is we can mark all of these different keys and we can say that we want to have a cubic interpolation. This will smoothen out the curve and give us tangents that we can grab hold of to alter the curves slightly. And by having one of these selected, for example, we can change so we have all tangents are shown, the tangents of the selected keys like the one I have right there or no tangents, for example. So that's what that option does. Up here, we can see uh, the definition of a specific key. So in this case, I have a key uh, marked here. The first value represents the time, so at 0 0.5 in time, and 0 0.6 represents the value at that specific time. So I could change these and it would move the key around. Uh, and this is probably the best place to insert values so you get it at exactly something you want instead of having to drag it. Now, currently there's snapping on, so it's kind of easy to get it to a specific point, but if you didn't want to have snapping on but still get it exactly, uh, these are the two values that you play around with. You also have the ability to, let's see, where is it? Here you have snapping, for example, along the x-axis. This is snapping for the y-axis, so value and time. You have different forms of interpolation if you want to have a different um, curve shape uh, unless you don't want to play around with the tangents yourself um, you can also have different keys react differently so you can have different interpolations you can see that this one is currently marked as auto this one is marked as cubic interpolation but we could change this to a linear interpolation and you can see that the, the graph changes because of it so you have a lot of uh, ability to, to manipulate the curve how you want to, it to look. So that's how the simplest curve wor works and looks. Uh, to make use of it, we can go over here and we can delete this curve, uh, compile and save, and we can look at this event graph. So what I have here is I have a few different uh, timelines where we can make use of these curves. And to make use of the first curve, what we can do is we go over here, we mark the curve, we go over here to the blueprint where we can use the curve and then we click this button over here which is add select curve assets. You can also change it over here if you wanted to. So now it has imported the curve that we have created. You can see it's represented here. It's not editable from here in the same way as it is from that one. You can see that everything is marked out gray. So if you want to have a curve that uh, you want to use on multiple places and you want any changes to the curve uh, affecting them all, uh, using curves is a good way to do it instead of having to manually change all of them by hand. Um, yeah, so making use of this curve, let's go back to our event graph. What we can say is we want to play from start here with the light strength and we want to take the float value, multiply it by a thousand and set it to be our intensity for a point light because this specific blueprint is a point light. You can see this point light over here. So you can see some of the light reflecting or not reflecting, but being shown on the, the ground over there. So by walking over to this light now into this collision box, you can see that the light will first go down to low and then it will go up to about twice the brightness that it starts with. So that's one example of how you can make use of a float curve because a intensity value is driven by a float. So that's something that could be used for that. Looking at our uh, vector instead, we can <clears throat> instead call on this function down here and this uh, timeline that I've created. So for position, we can actually change our position here. So going to our curve that is for precision, which is, which is the vector curve, you can open that one up. You can see that it looks slightly different. Among other things, we have the different values over here. So what we can do here is we can just like before, we can create a key and then we can drag it around. But now you see that it's just dragging one of the lines here. There are still lines down here. Hovering over it, we can see that it says Y. 
This is because this represents the y axis currently. Over here next to the x, y and z you can see that we have some keys available. Hitting one of these buttons up here, the one next to the green one for example, will make it disappear so I can't see it. So that's how you can alter some of these as well. But we're going to be, first of all, we're going to take this key and we're going to delete it. We're going to be making, actually let's do it this way, we'll go to the blue one. The blue one represents Z, which is height normally. So we'll add some keys for this one. We'll add one over here, we'll add one over here. So at zero we'll have it over there, at half we'll have it over here. At one second we'll have it over here. So this represents height now, or could represent height if we wanted it to. Uh, currently the value here is not super much. Uh, let's see, maybe 0.4, something like that. We can save, we can go back to our light here. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be having a... We need to go into position, we need to find the curve, the vector curve. We need to go in here and we need to say apply it. So now we have the curve in here, just like we created it. Compile and save. Uh, going back to the light, we can now see that it will take a vector curve out here. So what we can do is we can split this, we can take the Z value, multiply it by something, add it to the Z value of the start location of this actor, which we are getting before we're doing this, and set it as the target actor location. This means that it will go up in height when we overlap this. So doing that, you can see that it goes up and then goes down again. So that's a way that you could make use of the vector curve, for example. Now the float, sorry, the color curve, it was similar. It has a, for some reason it has some values. Let's delete these. So here you can either manipulate it up here or down here. So what we can do is we can say we want to have a Let's say a value that is red and green. So at zero, we want to have some keys. Let's drag that up so we can see clearly here. And then we want to have some more keys. And let's drag these back down like so, and like so, and say this one should be 0 0.8 or something, and this one should be 0 0.8. You can put the blue one back again. So now we can see essentially what the result of this is going to be is we're going to get into the yellow and then it's going to go back into the black. Saving, going back to our curve light, we can hook this curve up and say that we want to make use of the color curve in this timeline. Compiling and saving. Actually, I didn't hook up any functionality, I think. Let's go here. So here we need to put the light in the point light essentially. So now it should go from being white to being completely dark and then yellow and then dark again. And that's exactly what happens. So that's another way we can make use of a curve and that's the color curve. So now you have a few examples of how you can make use of the different curves here and the, only the imagination really limits you here. Uh, but it's important to remember the basic functionality of how you create curves and what you have available to you, what they represent. So float curve is one float value, color curve is essentially four float values, and vector curve is three float values. And then you can make use of those four, like in this sense, the more sensible ways, uh, a specific float, a specific color, or a specific position. But you can also make use of them for different other things if you wanted to as well. You could, for example, have three different values for the position, the vector curve here, to drive different things if you wanted to. Um, yeah, I hope that made sense and I hope that that was uh, useful. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.